Chapter 18 The Magic of Happiness It has been said that in America where there is so much crime and drug taking one out of every 20 people are unbalanced. Stand in any queue in this country and you see drawn faces to harass the look of people who are wanting things and not getting them. You hear so much pessimistic talk and know that most of them living live on sleeping tablets and other pain-killing drugs. So you might say that it is the same here, about 1 in 20 have run off the rails. I was talking to a railway booking clerk the other day, and he told me how he sold a laughing schoolgirl a ticket. You see few smiles through my little window, he added. Then he went on, we are a gloomy lot on the whole, don't you think, he said. I knew what he meant, for as a mind reader and a man who observes people, I have noticed more scowls than smiles. Yes, the majority of people are unhappy. They may be bright to a certain extent, but inside of them they are unhappy. They are not glad all over, as the song says, and this leads people to do strange things. Sometime today, somewhere, someone will be caught stealing for no apparent reason. Shoplifting is done so often by people who could well afford to buy things. They are not in desperate need. However, wrong stealing is, even the taking of petty things, it lends excitement to the wrongdoer. If they were happy, that in itself would be exciting, but they are not, so they thieve, they become unbalanced. You cannot know happiness if you are unbalanced. You cannot know happiness if you do wrong, because even if you are not fully conscious that you are doing wrong, your subconscious knows. And it is this underneath mind that works the magic of happiness. You can't work magic by wrongdoing. It is against the law of purity. And as I have said before, the first principle is to be pure. Like the firewalkers who would never attempt to walk barefoot over red hot cinders until they had first become pure. You can't bring the magic out of your mind by taking sleeping pills and tranquilizers. Drugs dope the mind and put it out of action. If happiness lasts no longer with you than the clouds flight over the sun, then something is very wrong in your world. What makes people happy? Is it a matter of money, health, success, romance, religion, or what? Or is it a matter of outlook? It is a combination of all these things. I know it isn't easy to be happy when you can never make ends meet, when you are sick in mind and body because of it, when you can't get beyond the bottom rung of the ladder, when love has jilted you, or when you have no religion or philosophy to hang on to. You are frustrated. This book tells you how to get all these things right in your life by meditation and visualization and right direction. You may be irritated to the extreme by bad conditions, but if you keep your attitude positive, you can overcome and achieve. Remember this, the happy oyster with nothing to irritate him is not the oyster who produces the pearl. If I haven't answered your problems, the Bible will, but use discernment. The Bible is good psychology. It is full of wisdom on how to attain joy, happiness. And what is its answer? Belief. Over and over again, two words are used. One thing, one thing is lacking faith. If you would bring the magic out of your mind, the magic which will transform everything, you must believe. Whatever your condition, you can be happy if you have the right attitude and train yourself to look at life through rose-colored glasses. The story of Cinderella is really the story of magic. Cinderella was the drudge of the home, but she never once complained. She never grumbled or criticized her ugly sisters. She was happy. She was sweetness. She had the right attitude. 
The good fairy, we will call her the subconscious who knew what Cinderella wanted, changed the pumpkin into a golden coach, the mice into horses, the Cinderella, Cinderella went to the ball as glamorous as a princess. Cinderella was happy even in rags. She went from rags to riches because this attitude works magic. The subconscious can only do its work when the path is clear. As you are training to be a magician, you should by now know the secret to happiness. You should have trained yourself to believe. You should have trained yourself to take your troubles to your subconscious in the quietude of silence, stillness and s solitude. In the quietude of your own little meditation room, you should have trained yourself to see wonderful things and to have the right attitude. You should have trained yourself to be pure, to raise your vibration to as high as you can, to align yourself with the universal field, infinite wisdom, omnipresent, omniscient, and omnipotent, all-powerful, all-knowing, and all-present, omnipresent. Quantum physics attests to this these days. It was the Buddha who said, if a man speaks or acts with a pure thought, happiness follows him like a shadow that never leaves him. If you adhere to this law of magic, this shadow will never leave you. You will always be happy. Abra Kadabra, speak the blessing. Use this magic word with your magic intention vibration and feel good now. This is how you bring the magic out of your mind. Seeing everything through rose colored glasses is the right attitude. Tommy Steele, that polished all round performer, zestful and exuberant once said I am a firm believer that if a man's been happy up to twenty he'll always be happy see what I mean the right attitude a selfish person may know pleasure riding here and there in his smart car but such a person can never know happiness a selfish person never goes out of his way to help you he wouldn't give you a lift in his car no matter how many parcels you were carrying because such a thought never enters his silly head. He may have pleasures in plenty and boast of them. We're flying to Paris next weekend. But he doesn't know happiness, which is something deeper and of the spirit. There is an old Hindu proverb. Help thy brother's boat across and know thine own has reached the shore. In other words, it is the unselfish person who attracts magic and for whom it never leaves. Well, you say, I filled up the coal bucket for that old lady down the road. I've posted letter for, letters for that old pensioner across the way. I've babysat so that a young couple could go to a dance together. But what have I got? Nothing. Things are just the same as they ever were. There's nothing magical about it. If you do a kindness simply hoping to get something out of it, then you have done, then you don't know the first thing about magic. Walt Disney, in a recent film called Pollyanna, the girl who takes the grimness out of life by finding something to be glad about in every situation. Look for the gold. Search through the junk and find the treasure. Two men stared out prison bars. One saw mud, the other saw the stars. We never lie, but we hope to live, and as we are always arranging for being happy, it cannot be, but that we never are so, wrote Pascal. He also wrote, All man's problems stem from his inability to sit quietly with himself. So, to read that quote again, Pascal said, We never live, but we hope to live. And as we are always arranging for being happy, it cannot be but that we never are so. 
You can't arrange to be happy. You don't plan it just like that. Happiness is an attitude of mind, a state of vibration, a state of mind. And you either have it or you do not. It happens if you have the right mind. If you planned to be happy tomorrow or the next day, there is no saying that it would be so. Not unless you had the right attitude, whatever happened. If it rained, snowed, or the earth quaked, you don't pursue happiness. You don't run after it like that. Happiness is something that fills the moment, right here, right now, and it comes upon you unawares. While you are helping others, for instance, it is not something you arrange. Emerson was a happy man. He must have been. In one of his diaries, he says that his railway bonds crashed in the panic of 1657. It may be 1857. He refers to his losses just once. His house burned down and his diary records house burnt. His house burnt down and his diary records house burnt. Just two words. Then he goes on to tell you of the most important things for which he was ever grateful. William Wilberforce kept a diary too. He was not free from heartaches. He had a thousand and one troubles. Yet his records were full of thankfulness, gratitude, appreciation and thankfulness. He skimmed over the bad patches and showed expressions of deep gratitude for the blessings he enjoyed on nearly every page. After a particular great sorrow he wrote, no one has had such reason as myself to say that goodness and mercy have followed me all my days, surely the words of a happy man. Make the habit at the close of day to count on your both hands ten different things throughout the day that you are grateful to the universe or whoever you believe in for gracing your life with your health, the company of good friends, the inspirations, the encouragement you gave, the encouragement you were given, anything, the food on your table, the sun shining, laughter, on and on and on. Ten things every day at least. It's not much. It's not much to ask for. A properly balanced mind never puts self first. And a fine example is Dr. Albert Schweitzer. Happiness comes from the heart. Doing something for someone in order to bring them happiness without any thought of reward really does bring you happiness. But if you do it wondering all the time what you are going to get out of it, brother, you have had it. A properly balanced mind never puts self first. And a fine example is Dr. Albert Schweitzer, one of the most unselfish and happiest of men. There is a fine line as well between selfishness and a healthy selfishness. Well, that's another book for another day. He gained fame as one of the best biographers, musicians, philosophers and theologians. He renounced everything to devote his life to helping others. He gave it all up when he became a great surgeon, that he might devote his life to bringing health and happiness to natives in the equatorial jungle. He spends his life with the lepers and is a dedicated man, and he is one of the most eminent Bible scholars in the world. What does he say? In happiness to others you know happiness, he says. Our greatest mistake as individuals is that we walk through our life with closed eyes and do not notice our chances. In his hard job of complete unselfishness he has found the only true happiness and he admits it. He urges others to do the same. True happiness is relative, remember. Every person is different. We're not all wired to be Mother Teresa's, but helping others does help you. Brian Chetwin, a 22-year-old Liverpool boy, took up his challenge. He spent more than a year with Ethiopian lepers. It was just over 15 months ago that he volunteered for a year's work in a backward country with the Voluntary Services Overseas Organisation. 
Three days after arriving in Ethiopia, Brian was sent 170 miles into the bush with 80 lepers to build a village. In the next seven months, during which he saw only one European, he directed the clearing of 144 acres of bush and helped erect workshops. Then, when the village was complete, he taught the lepers to become a self-contained community. Now, back in England, Brian believes he has returned a wiser, more experienced, better in every way, and a happier person. People who dedicate their lives are among the most happy. Think of Valencia, Russia's cosmonaut and the first woman in space. Valencia Nikolaevia Tereskova, like Yuri Gagarin, the spaceman, has all the time a wonderful smile. Everybody was charmed who had the pleasure of meeting her, and she captivated viewers on their television screens. A beautiful and very happy woman. Would she one day go back to work, adding to her 48 orbits of the Earth, after having her baby? Valencia married her fellow cosmonaut, Andrian. She said, I have promised to dedicate my life to the cosmos, the life and work of a cosmonaut. Wonderful, isn't it? Her great achievement brought everybody happiness. You get happiness from life if you put happiness into it. The thing you want, that you must be. You become what you think about and feel good about most of the time. Happiness does not mean that we are to be delirious with joy every minute, nor placidly content with our lot. It is an exhilaration which comes from living life to the full, doing something for somebody else, and accepting whatever comes along in the right spirit. Boiling Broke wrote, He alone is happy, and he is so truly so, who can say, Welcome life, whatever it brings, welcome death, whatever it is. If you are feeling unhappy, the best thing you can do is to go out and find someone to help. The founder of the Boy Scouts, Lord Baden-Powell, knew this, and that is why he made it a rule that every Boy Scout should do a good turn every day. Have you seen a miserable Boy Scout? I haven't. They are happy and never so happy as when they have knotted their kerchief, which tells the world that they have done a good deed for that day. Many people dedicate their lives and do things to make others happy. I think of the Lady Muriel Dowding, wife of Air Chief Marshal Lord Dowding, and spearhead of the Beauty Without Cruelty campaign. campaign. She has dedicated her life in trying to stop all cruelty to animals, and I know of no other lady quite so dynamic in her ambition. Lord Dowding does much for the animals too. The Lady Muriel Dowding has always a sunny smile, obviously so happy, except when she's hearing of cruelty to animals. She is very beautiful and tireless in her devotion to the cause. Gerard Cutler, M.A., is also is another whose whole life is a dedication to suffering animals. Gerard is a happy man, a smiling barrister at law, never so happy as when he is giving pleasure to help other people and the animals he loves. Not only does he bring joy and surprise to those around him, but his every thought is to eliminate all cruelty to creatures big and small, and he is ever striving to achieve this ambition. A wonderful Brahmin friend emphasized to me the supreme importance of service before self. He said, My most happy hours are those dedicated to others and to the weakest of the defenseless, the animals, he says. All that is best in me I have given to them, and I mean to stand by them to the last and share their fate, whatever it is. But you have to remember the example of the aeroplane oxygen masks. You have to put your own oxygen mask on first, because you're no use to your child or someone beside you who is unable to put it on unless you have your oxygen first. So remember, if they're talking about self-sacrifice, put it in perspective. This is Gerard's way to happiness. There are others, and it is a fine way. Lady Blanche Roby, wife of the late Sir George, Prime Minister of Mirth, is another very happy woman. She has always the sweetest smile for you. She works unceasingly for the good of the Red Cross and other charities. She tackles her splendid work in a calm, unruffled way with a driving power, which, 
by comparison with other people, is quite amazing. Yet she remains wonderfully happy. There are many like these good people who devote their lives to others and in doing so find a happiness few of us know. Danger brings some people happiness. Danger for a cause or danger that excites the onlooker to happiness. Take Donald Campbell, the land and water speed ace. He is never happier than when he is speeding dangerously on the water or alongside some smooth beach. Dill Russell, a young man of 23, who was once a brilliant medical student, gave it up to devote his life to acts of illusion and escapology. He has done the most incredible things which nobody else has ever done or even attempted. They daren't. He dares anything. He is internationally famous. Millions have been thrilled by this daring on stage and television. Wearing a straitjacket and dangling upside down from a long rope attached to a helicopter, Dill Russell will revolve like a Catherine wheel, freeing himself while doing so and throwing the jacket away. Embedded in a box made entirely of ice, bound tight in iron bars and locked, he makes his escape. It's terrific. Lock him in any building and he will get out of it. He is the world's greatest escapologist. Danger thrills him, makes him happy, and it thrills his audiences, whether on stage or out in the open. Dill Russell is artistic, polished, sensitive, with immense charm. He wants to be a millionaire, and he is a psychologist enough to become one. Why not? He would very much like to meet Aristotle Onassis, because he is a man who has amassed a great fortune from nothing, rags to riches, and having done it, he enjoys his life. You may not want it to dangle from a long rope attached to a helicopter or to be embedded in ice, but this is Dill Russell's idea of happiness, and you could not meet a happier man. You would remember him always with delight because of the sunshine he radiates, because of his energy, because of his high energy vibration. Christian Bonington and Ian Clock made a successful ascent to the north wall of Eger on August 31st, 1962. This was their idea of happiness and they are to be warmly congratulated. People who live near mountains are happier than those on the plains. Why? Dr. Gallup, Doctor of Philosophy of Iowa University, makes this discovery. He intends to find out the reason. His Gallup poll team who for years have been finding out what people think all over the world, are now charged with inquiring, what is happiness? Dr. Gallup believes that if we can discover what makes people happy, it may be possible to treat unhappiness clinically like a disease. A Gallup quiz team of 50 to 100 are going out with a questionnaire which will last nearly an hour. A girl I know told me of her happiest moment. It was when she went in a, t in a den of eight lions alone and had a meal and champagne with them. In the presence of nearly a thousand sensation seekers, she calmly enjoyed herself. It was not until the press photographer took a picture and the flash sent them wild that she began to wonder. But she was not disturbed. They smashed the chair and table and crockery in a thousand pieces, then calmed down. She kissed the largest and most fierce, named Pasha, and the applause was deafening. It was my happiest moment, she smiled, really my happiness. She was carried shoulder high through the spectators and went home delighted that she had realised her greatest dream. Yes, danger has an attraction for some people. It is their way to happiness. Others delight themselves screaming at the beetles. There are potholers and mountaineers, those who fly aeroplanes high in the heavens, and those who go down into the bottom of the sea to find happiness among the coral reefs. The elephant trainer, the lion tamer, the snake charmer, all are happy in a life tinged with danger. What peculiar people, you say, how peculiar it is to find happiness among the lepers, the, th the lions, the excitement of the escapology, which even killed Houdini. You can't figure it out. There are those who devote their lives to charitable works, to the elimination of elements suffering, and you wonder and ask, don't they ever dance? Don't they ever enjoy themselves? Of course they do, like you and I, but it is, it is the deeper things of life which bring happiness. Dr. Schweitzer was right. You repeat what peculiar people. Jerusalem, chapter 14, verse 2. 
and the Lord, brackets, law, hath chosen thee to be a peculiar people. Unquote. Peculiar people are the chosen people. Chosen for what? For happiness, lasting, everlasting happiness. A magician knows the greatest happiness because he can perform a transformation. But before he is a true musician, magician, able to do these wonderful things, he must know his job thoroughly and adhere to the laws. He must have an awareness, an awareness of what he wants, of what he is going to do, of what he will make him happy, a burning desire, a magnificent obsession, and particularly an awareness of time. Billy Graham, that brilliantly inspired evangelist, in giving his world radio talk on the brevity of life, two days after President Kennedy was assassinated, said, Put your hand on your heart and feel it beat. It is saying, quick, quick, quick. Only a few brief years at the moment. And he goes on to add, I beg of you not to squander life. No one can be happy who squanders life. Enjoy yourself to the very full, but give a part of yourself to other people. Do something for other people. Do something to bring happiness into their lives. Like this, you will bring the magic out of your mind and happiness will follow you like a shadow. Tomorrow, today and always. Today, tomorrow and always. You will not become unbalanced if you find time to meditate. You will not be numbered among the harassed, the moaning, the groaning. In this age of high-speed living, most people behave as though they had no mind. Here is an extract from the Dublin Evening Mail, September the 9th, 1956, with the headlines. He's sensational, stunning and completely overpowering. And in answer to a press question, quote, The hardest thing to do is read minds that are not there. Unquote. 